Very good. Next we have HCR, House Concurrent Resolution 13, Concurrent Resolution Supporting the Protection and Restoration of Wildlife Corridors. Representative Schultz, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Committee members, I appreciate the opportunity to support this uh, resolution that protects uh, and, uh, uh, and, and hopefully helps restore uh, the, our wildlife corridors in the state. Uh, to start the presentation off, I'd like to turn the time over to Ms. Gabby Saunders, if I may. Representative, uh, we have an amendment. Would you like to speak to the amendment during your presentation or I, deal with that later? I would like to speak to that amendment. And I would also, as I was reading through the, the bill this morning, I noticed one other little um, uh, change that I would like to add um, if uh, the committee would indulge that at some point in time if they feel it's necessary. But it would be on line 81. Okay. And I'll start on uh, line 70 to read it, uh, just so that it's, it's clear. But it says, be it further resolved that the legislature and governor encourage the division of wildlife resources, universities, and others with expertise in the wildlife area to study where wildlife corridor migration corridors exist within the state and how to best, and how best to protect, and this is where I would like to add two words, uh, uh, best to protect and enhance <coughs> these corridors. Okay, we'll uh, can put, make note of that and then invite you to speak to that, uh, that proposed language and take action on it at the, later in the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, remember to state your name, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Gabby Saunders, and I'm the Campaign Communications Specialist for Wildlands Network, which is a nonprofit that focuses on habitat connectivity. Um, and that's really what has brought this bill to committee today. Um, during the last uh, hearing for Representative Snyder's bill, I feel like a lot of the tenants uh, that this resolution brings up were actually talked on by many of the good representatives here today. Um, when we talk about habitat connectivity, when we talk about conservation, it's not a question of whether or not Utah is growing. It has to grow. We have one of the best economies and we're adding a ton of people over the next few years. The question really becomes, how do we grow responsibly? And how do we do that taking into account our wild lands, our wildlife, and our landscapes that are so crucial not only to our economy, but our cultural heritage and what makes us special as a state? I know for me personally growing up here, being out in solitude and big in Little Cottonwood Canyon has always been one of the best experiences because it's a p place of peace and it is a place of discovery. And I know that's not only true for me, but many of the other residents of this state. So when we look at this development, it's a matter of looking at these wildlife migration corridors because as the science has come out, we've realized how crucial these are, especially to big game animals, because as they travel from their winter and their summer ranges, this is how they feed, this is how they reproduce, this is how herds grow. And with man-made barriers such as fences, roads, anything of that nature, sometimes those corridors get cut off. And when that happens, it means lack of food, it means lack of mates, which means uh, deer populations, elk, small animals, even pikas, their populations will start to go down, which alters landscapes and also will alter a really crucial sector of the economy, which is outdoor recreation, which Chairman Stratton did bring up earlier as well. Um, and that obviously being a huge sector of our economy, employing 110,000 people and being the main driver between our outdoor recreation industry. So um, I bring this bill to you today to consider that uh, when city and local governments are looking at city planning that they take into account these wildlife corridors and these migration patterns. So one, we do not have to go back after everything is built and re Tetris because that becomes more costly. We may as look at it um, from the front end and make sure it's taken care of there. We must encourage uh, state agencies as well as universities conti to continue to study where these migration corridors are so we can properly protect and enhance them. And finally, as we do this, we must also ensure that the rights of private landowners are taken into account and that they are not forced to participate in these programs but are instead incentivized. So with that, I yield. Thank you. Thank you. Th Rip Shane, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Just, I'd like to just speak to the uh, amendment really quick. So this, the amendment, as you can see, it just adds the fish, adds uh, fish in, um, into um, the, this uh, bill. 
and we all know that uh, fish have just as important uh, corridors and where they trade, uh, where they travel to spawn. In some cases with cutthroat, it's unbelievably uh, uh, hundreds of miles in some cases uh, through streams, and so I think that's an important part of protecting their corridors as well. And uh, I think for me, this is more than just uh, protecting the corridors, but actually helping to enhance the corridors. Uh, sometimes these animals, in many cases, travel hundreds of miles between where they summer and where they winter. And the habitat between those stretches are very crucial to adding fat and getting their bodies built up to uh, withstand the winter. We all know that as an animal goes into winter, if it goes into winter in poor condition, that uh, it, it has a, hard, a harder time surviving. So not only are we uh, working to protect these corridors, but to help enhance the corridors as well. And so encourage our universities and DWR uh, and other agencies to come together and uh, do some studies on that to, to, to help, help further that. I think another thing to recognize that's important is that these corridors are taught from their moms down to their, to, to their fawns. And if we let our wildlife herds get down to points uh, where um, in some cases, you know, the, those herds could become totally uh, eliminated. The, that, that transition in knowledge from their mothers down to the, to the younger ones, to the fawns, won't happen. And so uh, we lose, in some cases, whole herds because they don't know where to get to the summer range. They don't know the way back to the winter range. And so it's important that we keep our herds at healthy levels as well. And so I think this is uh, th this bill helps uh, this resolution helps do that as well. So with that, Mr. Chair, I'm open to any questions that the uh, committee may have. Thank you. Discussion, clarifying questions. Representative Chu. Thanks, Mr. Chair, sponsor. Uh, appreciate you bringing this forward. I do have a, a question. You know, uh, with your addition of the of the words enhance, uh, can you? Uh, Elaborate a little bit on what uh, you think uh, we might be referring to here uh, as far as the enhancement along the corridors. Sure. Yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, the, the habitat inside that uh, corridors, inside those ranges as they travel from one uh, area to another is crucial. And so as the DWR or other entities, uh, sportsmen's aid entities or other organizations work on habitat projects, Hopefully this would encourage them to work on some habitat projects in those corridors as well. So uh, if I might continue, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so uh, it might uh, also, uh, if we deem an area as a, as a uh, necessary corridor, give it another uh, uh, point on the scale as far as uh, determining where to, to spend some of those enhancement monies then. Yes, yes. I mean, you, you think, it, you know, there's several things. Four-wing salt brush you can plant. Uh, kochia is big in uh, late November, first part of December. Packs a, a good protein. Bitter brush, those types of uh, um, uh, forage um, and uh, forbs can help uh, really pack, put some pounds on their high, high quality, high protein going into the winter, um, can help put some fat on the animals as they transition into the winter range, helping them to survive. So, appreciate that. I uh, actually can say I really understand the need to have your animals healthy when they go into the winter range, whether it's livestock or, or the game. Thanks. Thank you. Further clarifying questions, Representative McHale. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think this is fantastic. Obviously, I'm going to support this. My, my question is, is, is this enough? I know it's a resolution. Um, and I want to ask that question in this context. I go down Highway 6. I know we've done a lot of fencing to kind of direct where the deer cross so they're not killed out on the freeway. But when I drive to Nevada, I drive to Reno or Elko, you know, they've built some really nice overpasses for wildlife. To, to preserve them. And, and I'm always worried that when we build a, a specific spot, I, I mean, I don't want hunters, you know, as, as a hunter, I don't think it's ethical to, to lock down on those, those crossing areas. But is, is this enough? Where do you see this going at, at this point? I mean, Colorado is way ahead of us. I think Nevada is way ahead of us. We, we certainly need, need to improve to protect our herds in these crossings. But the question is, is this enough? And if not, where, where do we go after, after this? 
Yeah, I, Representative McKelly, I think you bring up a great point. Uh, you know, one of the highest mortality rates uh, we see on our deer herds and animal herds is uh, vehicle collisions. And it's certainly a great point, and I, I would hope that uh, UDOT would take this resolution and incorporate uh, what they're doing when they're working on road projects and, and different things to add uh, those crossings and fencings, and I think that's a discussion that, that is the, you know, I, I want to give UDOT credit because they have been working on on those types of, of um, projects. But uh, I think you know we just as a whole bunch of other things we can always do more. Thank you. Seeing no further questions, we'll open up for public comment. Is there anyone here who would like to to comment? Looks like we have several. Okay, please come forward if you would. Uh, Rep. Save, maybe we invite your witness to. Uh, uh, allow so we can have two come up at yes. a time. And Thank you. Welcome. And just remind you to sign in and state your name. Appreciate it. Good morning, representatives. Kirk Robinson, founder and executive director of Western Wildlife Conservancy headquarters here in Utah. Uh, Western Wildlife Conservancy has been a partner organization with Wildlands Network um, since its founding. We've worked together on various projects. And I'm quite familiar with a number of the um, very important wildlife movement corridors in the West, starting with the path of the pronghorn in Wyoming, for example, uh, all the way from the Red Desert at the southern end of the Wind Rivers into uh, Jackson Hole, and I bring this up for two reasons. It's just one example. They've also found another parallel mule deer herd there within just the, the last few years that nobody knew existed. Um, that's interrupted by the Jonah Field at the foot of the Wind Rivers. And at that field, I'm not going to argue against it or its importance, but uh, before this migratory herd was discovered, um, that field was developed, and they, since that time, the herd has almost declined by 50% because it has to travel through the field. Uh, and I want to tell a little story in this connection. I hope you'll bear with me. About 35 years ago, I was backpacking, or getting ready to go backpacking in the Wind Rivers on a solo trip, and I read in the Pinedale Roundup that there would be a town meeting that evening uh, concerning uh, somebody's desire to build a, a resort on the southwest corner of Fremont Lake by Pine Creek where it exits the lake. I decided to go and listen. And um, an elderly man, probably younger than I am now then, but uh, got up and, and said, you know, it turned out he was a hydrologist from Berkeley and the son of Aldo Leopold, and he liked to spend his summers up there. And he said, this is one of the most pristine lakes around. Uh, Pinedale gets this culinary water from it without treatment. If you build this resort, you're going to have a problem. The town decided they didn't want that resort, and it's still missing. Uh, since then, they've discovered this migratory deer herd and the route that it takes, which would have been right through what would have been this resort. I've been there, I've looked at it. You can even see it from Google Earth if you, if you know where to look. But the problem was people didn't know about it because they were not able to track the animals through 180 miles or however far they traveled. So we've learned a lot more about these routes over the years, especially recently with the aid of telemetry collars and, and other methods, trail cameras. And uh, going back to the pronghorn for just one moment, um, it turned out that they needed highway overpasses, so you find two of them outside of Pinedale now. One between, uh, uh, one on the way to Bondurant, one to, on the way to the intersection down to Big Piney. Um, but that path of the pronghorn, which goes up the Grovant River and comes over into the upper Green River Valley, in certain places has to pass through private property. And um, ranchers didn't know about this path. 
And in some places, it's you know, wider maybe than the space we have here. Uh, turned out that they were able to allow the pronghorn to pass through without having to try to jump over the fences, which is often lethal to them, by just playing with the fencing a bit and protect the private property at the same time. So I, uh, my point is that I think this, you know, we're, we're learning a lot more about the science of conservation and how wildlife corridors are important for uh, sustaining viable herds of deer and elk and other animals. And I think, uh, I thank you for the, allowing me all this time, but I, I think it's very important that we understand that we're going to continue to learn more about this. And as we do, we're going to find new and better ways of protecting and enhancing those corridors, and at the same time, protecting private property rights. So um, I and my organization are wholeheartedly in support of this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate the, the story that you told um, and uh, the personal touch. We, we have a few other items on the agenda, so I'm going to limit the rest of our presentations or our comments to two minutes. So please, if you can do that, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Andy Rasmussen, Latrout Unlimited again. And I just want to express appreciation to the sponsor for elevating this issue in this way, and also to be for your openness to adding the fish language. A little, little uh, history on that, or a little background. You know, Trout Unlimited has done a lot of work <clears throat> with this idea of connectivity. Uh, we have, just a couple of years ago, we have, we, we tag a number of fish throughout the drainages in, in the west, and we got one 10-inch cutthroat that uh, started in Utah in the Bear River drainage, traveled 68 miles in, in three months during the summer. And that had, didn't have anything to do with what he did in the winter. And that he traveled up into Idaho and main stem, several tributaries. <clears throat> Little fish about this big, the one that we tagged. Now we've got some other uh, fish tagged in the Weber River drainage. They're having a hard time making some of those kinds of movements. Uh, a lot is being done. In fact, in the last 10 years, Trout Unlimited has leveraged in the Weber drainage about $3 million of state, federal, and private funds. Uh, to remove or mitigate 25 barriers. Now, there, we work with, as partners with the Division of <clears throat> Wildlife on mapping all their barriers, and there's still thousands more. And so we'll, what we'll do is we'll go in as part of our project work and either remove a barrier, a culvert, or whatever, or a, or a diversion, or in most cases, actually rebuild it so it allows fist passage but still respects the rights and the needs of, of the water rights holders. So appreciate the uh, sponsor again and your consideration on this. Trout Unlimited is fully in support of this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Steve Erickson, policy advocate for Utah Audubon Council. Uh, our roughly 2,000 members statewide you know, fully endorse this, support this proposal. I think it's important that we have the legislative intent and the statement there that um, in, we need to have these kinds of corridors for wildlife to, to pass th safely uh, across roads and other uh, impediments and avoid the kind of conflicts that we've seen in other places and controversies around these uh, overpasses and underpasses uh, by making sure that our local governments work closely um, with uh, the, all the interests that are involved and in making sure that we have uh, effective wildlife corridors for the future. So thank you to the sponsor and hope you support the bill. Thank you for your comments. Welcome, ma'am. Good morning. I was been asked to share a personal experience that I had with uh, hitting a deer. My name's Chelsea Saunders. Um, I was traveling about 65 miles per hour in a Lincoln Town car with my 10-year-old son in the passenger seat when I came upon a deer that jumped out in front of me. Fortunately, my husband at the time repeatedly told me not to swerve if I faced the situation, and I, was, I listened to him at that moment and struck the deer straight on. Um, going 65 in a very large vehicle, the equivalent of my living room on wheels, created quite a violent um, death 
for that animal and destroyed the, the vehicle itself. Um, I was very grateful at that moment that I was able to survive that incident if I was not in such a large vehicle and swore or swerved, I certainly would be dead right now. But one of the consequences that I didn't consider was how that affected my child. He was very traumatized by the situation. It had a difficult time getting in cars for a long time. And even when he was 16 and got his driver's license, it took him a year to be able to get onto the freeways and the highways. Um, thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Wish your son well. Welcome, ma'am. Would you like to go first? Please go ahead. Okay. Hi, good morning. Thank you for your time and your efforts this session. I appreciate everyone listening to us. Um, my name's Erin Ferguson. I'm the sec secretary with Save People, Save Wildlife, currently started in Summit County, but we're looking at, at state issues now at this point. Um, I've been asked by Gabby to share a personal sli side of this. Um, my, my late husband was um, instrumental in getting the wildlife bridge at Parley Summit in place. Um, it's made a huge difference and much, much to the delight of scientists and everyone involved in the project, the wildlife are using it much sooner than expected. So it's, it's a success story. We'll start there. Um, to echo the, the sentiments of the, of the sportsmen's groups and everyone that recognizes the, the, basically the heritage and the, and the lifestyle of Utah citizens. It's, it's a shame to see these resources rotting roadside after wild vehicle, wildlife vehicle collision. You, you incur the cost of the motorist hitting the vehicle, insurance, medical teams responding, law enforcement responding, the, the people paid to remove the carcass from the road, it's a, it's a safety issue as well as a resource management issue. And much it, to ensure the viability and the genetic sustainability of these herds going forward, we can't isolate them with fencing. We have to establish corridors. So I think part of the enhancement um, added to the, to the proposed bill is we, we use the fencing and the cattle guards to to enhance these corridors for safety as well as preservation. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Mr. Chair, committee, Bill Christensen with the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation again. Compliment Representative Schultz for this uh, great resolution. Uh, some two years ago, former Secretary of the Interior, Zinke, came to the Hunt Expo, which we just finished having, and signed documents about wildlife migrations in Utah and throughout the West. I'd like to echo what's been said in 30 years of working for wildlife in my career and helping Patty Kramer and others develop plans for overpasses, underpasses, as well as habitat enhancement along these important corridors for big game and for fisheries. We wholeheartedly support this resolution and compliment the sponsor for bringing it forward. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Mr. Committee Chair, committee members, Jason Davis, UDOT Deputy Director. Uh, I'd first like to start off saying I wish all of our projects we did were as uh, widely supported as when we do wildlife uh, projects. Um, we do appreciate this resolution and our partnerships that we have both with uh, UD UWDR as well as the private um, groups that, that come forward and, and help us get these projects done. Uh, we've installed over 50, uh, mostly underpasses, but a couple overpasses, as was mentioned. The Parley's um, overpass has been hugely successful, and it's really interesting to see the, the multitude of uh, different animals from bobcats to mountain lions, bears, um, and finally a few moose are starting to use it, so that's a good thing. Uh, but we're also looking at how we can use technology um, to monitor these corridors and uh, identify and prioritize the taxpayer dollars so they're used in the most effective uh, areas possible. And, and that partnership with UW, or UDWR um, is very important in getting those uh, locations identified. So thank you. 
Thank you, sir. Welcome, Director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mike Fouts, Director for Utah Division of Wildlife Resources. Uh, just quickly wanted to speak in support of this resolution. <clears throat> it dovetails nicely with the migration initiative that we started here in Utah some three years ago. Uh, and it also validates our partnership with, uh, with UDOT and the great work we're doing with them, too. And we'll enhance that work. So thank you. Thank you. Troy Justinson, Sportsman Fish and Wildlife. Just like to say amen to everything that's been said today. We support this and would encourage you to pass this resolution forward. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Anyone else? Okay, seeing no, no one else, we'll uh, bring it back to the committee for further discussion. Just in housekeeping committee, we have a written amendment, and then I would like to propose that uh, we look at uh, someone making a motion on that, and then we'll have a voice amendment. But uh, I'd just like to note something. Uh, one of the great things about Utah is that we can disagree on issues and and civilly and with compassion, understand, talk, work through, and end up with a better resolution. But I I'm having a hard time remembering Representative Schultz when we've had such a full house and such unanimous support. It's a great thing for Utah to be uh, when we do speak unitedly. What we can do as well, and so we we appreciate. Whatever, whatever there is, in every voice, but it's it's uh, uh, you've struck seem to have struck a pretty good, good uh, piece here. So, Representative Owens, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to uh, move to um, adopt Amendment One. On Motion resolution. is in order to adopt HCR thirteen concurrent resolution supporting the protection and restoration of wildlife corridors in. Amendment one in the name of the sponsor, Representative Schultz. You'd like to speak to that motion? I'll, I'll wave. wave. All right. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. Representative Lyman. I'd like to move that we. Uh uh, pass the voice amendment uh, to line 81, adding enhance to that line. Motion is in order. Let's make sure we get this in the right place. Line 81 would read, well, we'll start with a, well, study where wildlife migration corridors exist within the state and how best to protect, and then add the word and enhance and en these corridors. Is that correct? I believe that's correct. Is that correct? Okay. Motion is in order. Discussion of the motion. I'd like to speak to it. Thank you. Um, I do have, I, I, I love state government, and I love what we're doing here. Um, the, the only concern that I have in any of these things is that they get weaponized and used uh, against the people that, that you kind of these unintended consequences. So when we come up here to the state government, we're able to address these things, fix these things, move them forward. What I what I don't want to see happen with this uh, is that it is that it opens up some federal avenue and some of these uh, groups that that like to use federal agencies and decision making in D.C. to come out here and, and hurt locals. Um, I'm hoping that we retain, retain control of this of this uh, issue. We have a great division of wildlife resources. As has been really acknowledged here, it's a, it's a huge asset to the state. We own it, and we should act like we own it. We should act like a state on this issue. So I, I commend the sponsor for this bill. I'm, I'm thrilled with it and uh, uh, support it 100%. Thank you. Further discussion to the amendment. Representative Albrecht. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, too, would like to speak in support of this uh, uh, amendment and also the, the resolution. Um, Prime example of corridors, uh, southern Utah, Ponsagant deer herd that moves from uh, high up in the alpine country near Tropic Reservoir all the way down and, and actually crosses 89 into northern Arizona. And I know you, Dot, has put some underpasses there that have saved a lot of uh, fantastic deer down in that area. So I commend them for that. But uh, the whole idea of uh, these corridors is important. And the Ponsagon's one of the premier deer units in the state and the country. So thank you for your good work, sponsor. Further discussion of the motion, Representative Briscoe. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I love this concept. We're all doing the kumbaya. I would restate what I mentioned about the earlier. Uh, overpasses are great. S road design is wonderful. But how we grow in the future as we add more people will probably have more impact on preserving our herds than anything we can do. Thank you. Thank you. See no further discussion. We'll sum uh, to the sponsor. Thank you. I'll save my comments for to later. the maker of the motion. I'll wave. All in favor of amending HCR 13 with the words and enhance at the after protect on line 81, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nah. Say nay. Okay, very good. We have an amended HCR 13. Uh, Representative McKell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that we favorably, favorably recommend HCR 13 as amended. Motion is in order. Would you like to comment on your motion? We've had a fantastic discussion, so I'll wave. Thank you. Discussion of the motion. Seeing none, we'll bring it to the sponsor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the support um, that this uh, resolution has received thus far. I also appreciate uh, Ms. Gabby Saunders for bringing this uh, resolution to me to, to run. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think to your point about how there's, there's times that we, we can come together as different groups and organizations and may, many uh, times opposing views, the way we view things shows a lot, I think, about Utah and also more importantly, how we feel about the wildlife in our state and how uh, it's so important to us. Uh, you know, just uh, there are a lot of comments made on the uh, previous bill on, uh, from Representative Snyder that uh, presented and to see these groups all come together to support uh, some of these things is pretty neat and, and exciting. And um, as was mentioned earlier in previous testimony on the Representative Snyder's bill, Utah spends more in conservation dollars uh, on, and on habitat work than all the other states combined. And so I think that does says a lot about that. And I hope that uh, this resolution helps focus some of those dollars uh, that, that are being spent on protecting and enhancing the wildlife corridors because they are so crucial to the, the uh, viability of our, our, our herds. Uh, wildlife herds um, uh, in the long run in the future. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you to the maker of the motion. I wave. Okay, we'll have a voice vote on HCR 13, concurrent resolution supporting the protection and res restoration of wildlife corridors as amended. Secretary Service. Representative Watkins. Yes. Owens. McHale? Yes. Lyman? Yes. Ferry? Yes. Chu? Yes. Briscoe? Aye. Albrick? Yes. Wild? Yes. Stratton? Yes. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations.